a serenade. Beautiful song. Now the tempo is moderato, and I feel like taking this a little too fast. It's really no longer a serenade, and it becomes more of a fast dance or a jig. So, um, it's a waltz, it's a serenade, so we want to maintain that feeling of motion and not make it too fast. But I'd like to call your attention here to, um, here to line two, which uh, I guess you could say is like, this area here is full of really cool ideas that I kind of encourage you to play around with. Um, the little takeaways from this. All right, number one, we've got a G7 starting off line two. All right, number two, what's important to know is that um, it's really hard to play this song just as marked, meaning rhythmically. So we see this first item here being um, right there just just being a quarter a series of three quarter notes and so getting that tempo to work really well it's really you know just getting the feeling is tough that's not a serenade is it that's uh i don't know that's a race so g7 voiced as follows the first beat of line two f g b so we've got, um, it's like a G6 chord. Could also be referred to as a G13. And then we have the D note here. You don't have to hold this chord out. But unless you have a clean way to get out of that chord, you know, it's going to sound like... So really you just want to be a practice at using your right hand to mute when necessary, right? Like... Follow, uh, going into measure two now, okay? So measure two. Let's put it back on the screen, shall we? Measure two is... Now, I, I, I was holding that note out. I was not playing it correctly. I, it sounds pretty, and you know, since this is a method book, I do a little bit of interpretation to make the tunes a little more uh, appealing sometimes. So, line two, measure two. Here we are. Right there, we have... So... Make sure you're using the alternate picking here. So down, down, up, down, up, measure three. So, all right, let's talk about this. All right, here, here's the thing about measure three. Um, you know, I, I don't know in this book, I can't remember if they've introduced the second position yet. Probably not, but uh, this flows really well. You play the string one, open E, string two, uh, C sharp, string three, A sharp, string four is a, that's a G. So you've got a diminished chord here. So I would call that a G diminished. You could also call it a, an A sharp diminished or a C sharp diminished. The important part is to start to play around with these tonalities. So it's a C-sharp diminished chord going on there, and you're running backwards. So what's the moral of the story here? The moral of the story is that we played a C chord, didn't we? Right, we played a C chord here in measure two, and then we're playing a C-sharp chord here over there in measure, uh, measure three. 
C sharp diminished. So listen to that. Just learn yourself some C chords and some C sharp diminished chords. And so on. And, and this is to provide motion, right? So C is the four chord and the diminished is the sharp four chord. So just, just kind of get used to the Right, G. G7. C. C sharp diminished. D7. Back to G. So that's the takeaway. Uh, then we just hit that D7 chord that you see located in uh, line two, measure four. And then I, I like that they name the chords. You see the old Mel Bay Wilkes never named them, but they're better about a little better about that now. So let's play line two. One, two, three. <laughs> That's a D7 arpeggio that you see there. You can play the D string open, D string fret 4, G string A, B string C, E string open, E string G. I, I like to, I, I often prefer to play it kind of like this. sharp here on string four fret four and a natural string three that's the uh, the most rear of our position two there so we have and then I'll play the C on string three fret two it's a very easy to remember shape so you don't have to use the open string so you kind of have D F sharp a C and then in our piece of music here we play an E natural and a G natural so we are playing uh, a D9 chord So um, the value in Mel Bay is working through it with another human, so you kind of understand what's going on, and doing some analysis as you go along. And now you know that you can play a C chord, followed by a C sharp diminished. That's a diminished seventh, followed by a D. And then uh, in the piece of music, we're going to go to a D9, a D7, and a G. So there's our D9. D7 and G. Yeah, okay. Well, I hope um, you found this helpful. And you know, I think what we're just gonna do is kind of this. And uh, one, 